Good morning, everyone. We call this recess meeting of the Will County Board to order. If everyone would please stand. County Board, County Board Member Bob Howard will lead us this morning uh, in the pledge and then introduce our clergy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I have the honor and privilege of introducing Pastor Phil Epperson today. He's from Trinity Evangelical Christian Church in Moni, Illinois. Uh, after several years of education, Pastor Phil went into full-time pastoral ministry in 1978. He also served in Palos Heights for 20 years, in two, and in 2008 became pastor of Trinity Church. And here's an interesting fact about him. Uh, pastor Phil and his wife have traveled to every state and spent one hour in their capital state, this capital, praying for America. And I, I think that, that's commendable. So thank you very much. Amen. Thank you for inviting me to come and pray today. I am still encouraged when I hear people want prayer in our governments and so needed today. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord, believing that your word is forever settled in heaven. You inspired King David by the Holy Spirit to write words of admonition for Israel, and they apply today here in Will County. David's question was simple. Why are the nations angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? Do the nations say, not us, not to us, Lord, not to us, but your name <clears throat> goes on and gets all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness? Uh, why let the nations say, where is their God? Many of, the, of us in America and around the world are asking that same question, where is God? But we know, as David knew, our God is in heaven, and he does as he wishes. America was founded on Judeo-Christian values. 52 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence professed a living faith in Jesus Christ. Paul the Apostle instructed <clears throat> Timothy to pray for those in authority. So today, we obey the Word of God again by asking your great godly wisdom to come to each person here in this room today as they make decisions, as they prepare and present information. Paul urged Timothy, first of all, to pray for all people, to ask God to help them. And he said, intercede on their behalf and give thanks to the Lord. So today we remember those struggling to find truth in Ferguson, Missouri. We also pray for the Christians in Iraq that are fleeing for their lives and many have already become martyrs. Lord, we also pray for the peace of Jerusalem as the Bible instructs us to do. And then we pray for our men and women in uniform. And we pray for those first-time responders. Only you know what is before them and when tragedy would strike. But we feel safe because they serve so faithfully. So bless them, keep them, and keep them safe because of your name and because of your word. We pray today, as Paul said to Timothy, pray for kings here in America, it's called our President of the United States. We pray for him. And we pray for all of those in authority, from Will County to Washington, D.C. Why are we to do this? So that we can live peaceful and quiet lives, marked by godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator, who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom. Yes, freedom. Freedom we enjoy so plentifully here in America. Oh, that the world could discover and find a freedom we have that you have given to us. Purchase our freedom for everyone, not only in America, but yes, the whole world. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Howard and the disaster, Gerald. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Sure. Tegrosi? Here. Neustis? Yeah, here. Howard? Here. Ogala? Dizzo? Here. Moran? Here. Bryce? Here. Harris? Here. Trainier? Benefield? Here. Bible? Here. Freitag? Here. Gould? Here. Balich? Here. Rizalone? Here. Winfrey? Here. Adamick? Here. Babbage? Here. Wilhelmy? Here. Hart? Here. Mayor? Here. McDermott? Here. Weigel? Here. Collins? Here. Berry? Here. And Brooks? Here. Thank you. 24 present, 2 absent. 24 present, a quorum has been established. Entertain a motion to place on file the certificate of publication. Moved by Mr. Babbage, second up Mr. Wilhelming. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Sure. Zagrosi? Yes. Neustis? Yes. Howard? Yes. Izzo? Yes. Moran? Yes. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Bible? Yes. Freitag? Yes. Gould? Yes. Balich? Yes. Fizzalone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Adamick? Yes. Babbage? Yes. Wilhelmy? Yes. Hart? Yes. Mayor? Yes. McDermott? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Collins? Yes. Ferry? Yes. And Brooks? Yes. Thank you. 24 affirmative. 24 affirmative motion has carried. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Will County Board July 17th. 2014. Moved by Mr. Mayor, seconded by Mr. Ferry. Any questions? Previous roll call by Ms. Rice, seconded by Mr. Wilhelm. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion has carried. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please acknowledge our elected officials and the press that is here with us this morning? Sure. Our Circuit Clerk Pam McGuire, County Clerk Nancy Schultz Booth, County Executive Larry Walsh, Recorder of Deeds Karen Stuckel. Sheriff Paul Copas, State's Attorney James Glasgow, and we have special guests in the audience. We have State Rep. Larry Walsh, Jr., our Mayor from Manuka, Patrick Je um, Brennan, our State Senator Jennifer bertino Turan, and our State Rep. Emily McCasey. I hope I caught everybody. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. In our press, we have Chicago Tribune, Alice Berger, <coughs> Farmers Weekly Review, and Bugle, Nick Breyer, South Town Star, Susan Laverty, and Herald News, Lauren Beyond Cross, and WJRL Monica DeSantis. Welcome. Okay, great. Okay. Moving on, uh, honorary resolutions and proclamations. Uh, county board members, John Gould and Raymond Wright uh, would please come forward with a proclamation recognizing Shanahan Mustang All Star Team. Coach Fernand Fernando Rizzo is coach here. Yes. All right. The team's here. The team's here. Oh, no school today? <laughs> this, is, this is better than school yes. any day. All right. Morning, everybody. It's always a pleasure. And today we welcome the Shanahan 9U Mustang All Star Team. And I'd like to read as follows Whereas it is the intent of the Will County Board and the Will County Executive to recognize outstanding achievements of individuals and organizations in Will County, and whereas the Shanahan 9U Mustang All Star Baseball Team won the North Zone Tournament in Plainfield defeating McCutcheonville, Indiana 16-1 to to advance to the World Series in Walnut, California. And whereas this was the first Pony 9U World Series game to be played, Pony Baseball had previously been only, only for 10U and up. And whereas the Shanahan 9U Mustang All-Star Team was undefeated in All-Star play until the World Series, and whereas even though Shanahan 9U Mustang All-Star Team lost its two games at the World Series, it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience for them. 
whereas this winning season can be credited not only to the commitment of coach Fernando Rizzo and assistant coaches Brad Allen, Michael Roberson Jr., and Dave Thomas, but to the determination and team spirit of the 12 members of this baseball team. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive duly recognize the Shanahan 9U Mustang All-Star Team for an outstanding season. And be it further res resolved that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive wish this exceptional team, their families, and their coaches continued success in the future. Dated this 21st day of August, 2014, Lawrence M. Walsh, Will County Executive, and Nancy, Nancy Schultz, Boots, Will County Clerk. So moved. And moved and seconded by Mr. Vitek. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very motion is carried. Congratulations, Coach. Congratulate our team. We have an awesome group of kids here that you know play hard every day, and that's what you want from a kid. You know, I tell the kids always leave it on the field. The average come. We just uh, always stay with it, play hard, and uh, also the coaches want to uh, thank them for the hard work they do, and the parents for the commitment of taking the kids to practice. And thank you very much for this acknowledgement. Uh, this is an experience the kids will never forget. So we appreciate this. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.
behalf of the Southwest Coalition, I would like to say thank you. And I've been here probably more times than you would like to, to, to remember. I, I, and I, all I want to say is I, I just want to thank all of you for the commitment that, that you've made to helping people either prevent substance use or to help those people that are struggling with substance use disorders. It means, uh, you know, the hope that people take from that means so much in our efforts to advance practices that, that really help people. And I want to thank the, the county, the state's attorney, Jim Glasgow, for everything that he's done through the drug courts, the recovery homes. It's been tremendous. It's making a huge difference. I, I hope you're all, you all are proud of what you're doing and with that. And the Will County Executive, Larry Walsh, who is really uh, the, the HELPS initiative, the heroin education leads to preventative solutions, has made a huge difference. I think you'll probably hear a little bit more about that. But really, Will County has been out in front on a statewide basis, even nationally, some of these efforts. We're excited about the Narcan that, that is going to be coming out. And anyhow, we couldn't be more pleased to be partnering with such a, a wonderful group of people. Thank you. Thank you. Since one of those the silent guys <coughs> behind the scenes, but this guy selfless, selfless dedication to his fellow man is unbelievable. That's all he does every day, 24 hours a day. He's thinking about how he's going to save somebody from this this issue of drug abuse. And when you when you look at one of the funniest guys uh, that we've ever seen, uh, Robin Williams, and we find out he's been a drug addict his whole life, alcohol, drugs, and uh, finally it wound up with with his suicide. So it touches everyone, and you can't tell by talking to somebody in a public setting whether they're addicted, uh, and that's the scary part. But I got some good news, because the county board really helped at every step of the way with the drug court, with the uh, passing the ordinance so we could have the additional money coming in from the courts, uh, with the recovery homes, with the jail was here, she was a champion. Uh, but the numbers in Will County are better than, I, I would state right now, better, better than anywhere in the country. We saw a surge that hit us and took us by surprise. We had single-digit fatal overdoses with heroin on an annual basis. And that, that jumped to 29 in 2009. And it skyrocketed to 53 in 2012. But in, in 2013, we dropped to 35. 2014, we're on a pace for 23. That's freaking amazing. So we went like this and then like this. And it didn't just happen because everyone came together. Uh, the summits that we had, the first one we had in 2011 at Homer Glen, when I thought we were all going to die because we were on a, a platform with a awning and the wind was blowing, lifting it up, and I asked the fire marshal, is this thing going to go like it did at the, uh, you know, the where was it, the uh, Sugar Land? Got sued because their thing went over and some people were killed. And, but we, we managed to maintain, and uh, we, we, we learned a lot of that. There, was, uh, there were people there. There was a young girl that talked about how her brother had overdosed, and she was crying through her entire talk because she had a flippant lifestyle prior to that, but ever since then, she, she was much more grounded and understood the value of life. So uh, this is a really meaningful thing, and it, and it affects our society on, on such a, a, a heavy level every day. But I think we can all be proud here in Will County and this is it. Everybody pulled together at every level, you know, because the convictions of drug dealers jumped from, I got the number here, from 2007 to 2009, we convicted 38 heroin dealers. The next three years, 112. And that's a credit to our law enforcement officers on the street because, I mean, my, my narcotics prosecutors can only work with what they're brought. And so they went out there with their snitches and they rounded up these heroin dealers and in, uh, 2013, we only convicted 14. Why? Not because we weren't trying, because they're all in prison. And that helped dry up the supply of heroin here in Will County to, to reflect in these numbers. But we can't let up, because it's going to come back, they're going to get out of prison, and we've got to be ready and keep doing what we're doing. We've got to we'll have another summit this year, and look forward to seeing you guys there. And let's just keep the pedal to the metal. Thank you. <laughs> We uh, have an award uh, coming to the county board from the Illinois Poison Center. Uh, and you know, county board member Suzanne Hart will please come forward. And a lady by the name of Sarah Calder. Sarah. Yeah, there she comes. Uh, my name 
name is Dr. Carol Delorier. I'm the Operations Director of the Illinois Poison Center. And on behalf of the Poison Center and MCHC, I would like to present the Will County Board with a Lifesaver of the Year Award. The Board's resolution in support of the Poison Center was instrumental in securing our funding and allowing us to re remain open. Thank you so much. This, uh, this last session and Bob and Bruce and everyone just everyone together and working for something that Will County believed that was very right and that was to keep the funding and poison control open. We all need it especially after what we had just heard about heroin and everything else. This is just it's a great team and we're in a great county and poison control thank you and the hospital working so hard and we love this. We appreciate this. Not at all expected, but we think it's wonderful. Thank you. children under the age of 15, and whereas it is estimated that 12,500 children are diagnosed with cancer each year, and whereas due to significant advances in treatment over the last 30 years, the combined five-year survival rate for children with cancer has increased by more than 20%, and whereas because all children deserve the chance to dream, to discover, and realize their full potential, we extend our support to all the young people fighting for that opportunity. And whereas, we salute and congratulate the survivors who have triumphed over this devastating disease. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive declare September as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Be it further resolved that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive encourage all citizens to join us in reaffirming our commitment to fighting childhood cancer. Dated this 21st day of August, 2014, Larry M. Walsh, Will County Executive, attest Nancy Schultz Boots, Will County Clerk, and I so move. Moved by Ms. Price, second by Mr. Grossi. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. Thank you very much, Ms. Rice. All resolutions from the July 17th County Board agenda have been signed by the County Executive. Um, next is public comment. Anyone here that wishes to address this board and uh, public comment? Carmela, please come forward. me, but are kept busy. 
you are somewhat stuck at the point of doing a very beautiful functional job and you go home and rest. Well, I have time. I'm a grandma and I scrutinize. Believe me, Americans, there is underhanded, satanic, communistic foreigners that are sent here on assignments. In my little background, this is a Japanese innuendo, mind games, keeping you busy while they're working on a false peace, control, less freedom, dictatorial, and I have more to back this. I watch because I have time. You people function beautifully, but underhanded, underhanded. They're keeping our police busy with false plots. You know this latest one, 40 of them are criminals. That's a cult. They are attacking our security forces, diminishing our military. This is all Satanism. There's more, and all I could say, I um, I am religious, and I'm sure all of you are. And I scrutinize, like I said, I have time, and you know what it is? A common sense. I mean, if you listen to me, oh my goodness, that's common sense. Well, there's an answer. Call Jesus. He was given by God our Creator as the mediator. He is, he is divine plus human with empathy. Thank God he's our judge. And I'll tell you, we need him. I can pick on TV generalization innuendos. Recently, this one foreigner, uh, the ones that could afford to be sent over, and the ones that are severely indoctrinated to overcome America, are here. My heart goes to the poor. Well, she will say, I'll say one, one example. The man is talking about the food problem, and nicely she'll bring it up. Yes, our government doesn't do much, and smoking too. I said, now, why would she interject smoking? The gentleman talking with concerns about our world, he didn't pick up on it because, I mean, it's another topic. So she could go and say, oh, well, he must have agreed because he had no comeback that smoking is deleterious. Now, that's one example. I took care of Japanese victims. And I learned a lot back in 59, and we had ships. This, about this, um, they're concerned about heroin. I'll tell you, it's tee hee hee with the Easterners, when people are in pain, they may have a chip. And I, I'm serious. They may have a chip. And oh, come back next month, $100 more especially the foreigners. Well, all I can say is people, we're in jeopardy. It's a takeover and a false peace. Who aren't you happy? Um, you got a lot of money. Well, it's blood money. Well, I'll tell you, I trust in Jesus. Ebola fetus, that is HIV. Anyway, I've had it up to here, and I, I love a lot of people. And my little input, I know you're looking at me. I mean, I'm just a little old woman. Again, I say, I see it. And I could back everything I say with substantial evidence. I'm trying. Trust in Jesus. He'll not do the work, but he'll guide you. And there's wonderful feelings fighting for the beautiful gift of life rather than like the communists with death. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any any other individual would like to address the board? Any other any other individual? Okay.
Good morning, Speaker Brooks, county board members, elected officials, and residents of Will County. I'm proud today to report on the condition of Will County. Our county remains a strong, vibrant, and diverse community that provides many opportunities for our residents and businesses. I will outline the progress we are making on a variety of fronts. I will also share my vision on how we can build on our past successes and keep our county moving forward. Will County is on the path to become the second most populated county in the state of Illinois, second only to Cook County, and surpassing one million residents by the year 2040. Only by taking a proactive approach and planning for our future will we be able to manage the challenges that lie ahead and realize the benefits of future growth. In order to be the best, we must prepare and act to make our positive vision of Will County a reality. In recent years, we have witnessed firsthand this remarkable growth as many businesses and families seeking a better opportunity <coughs> continue to be drawn to Will County because of our strategic location skilled workforce, affordable housing, and great schools. Will County has become a major player in the global marketplace. Our local intermodal facilities now export more than 100 million bushels of grain each year to points around the globe. This involves more than 2 million container lifts annually between trains and trucks. A massive increase in global trade has increased freight traffic in Will County, bringing new economic opportunities and, at the same time, create some local infrastructure challenges. Our residents have experienced the frustration of traffic congestion. But we must remember the incredible benefits of this growth, including more jobs and more consumers in Will County. We benefit from a stronger local employment outlook by jobs created in the freight and logistics industry. County government must act to address these challenges and continue to improve the quality of life for our residents while preserving the advantages that make businesses and industry want to invest here. Will County has a number of local representatives on the Illinois State Freight Advisory Council due to a significant role both regionally and nationally in the movement of freight. The council brings the public and private sector together to address critical freight issues and keep Illinois and Will County competitive. I am proud to serve on this council to keep our infrastructure needs at the forefront and make sure our transportation assets are part of the state's long-term vision. Farming has been long an economic engine for Will County and we are proud to showcase our status in the agricultural and export sectors during a visit from U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack in March of this year. As Secretary Vilsack toured the DeLong Company in the Center Point Logistics Center, he noted that agriculture represents 5% of the nation's gross domestic product and 1 in 12 jobs in the United States are connected to agriculture. I am confident that Secretary Vilsack returned to Washington impressed by the incredible volume of grain products moving, moving through Will County Intermodals which support the national goals of boosting U.S. exports and expanded international trade. A project proposed to improve local traffic conditions and strengthen Will County's inland port is a high-level bridge that would connect I-80 from the Hobolt Road interchange directly south into the north northern entrance of the region's intermodal facilities. This bridge would offer truckers trucks a shorter route to the intermodal yards from I-80. Will County supports exploring new and innovative options to fund and construct a new bridge and address existing congestion on Route 53. In financially constrained times, we must use our resources creatively and wisely on the highest priority infrastructure needs. This project is needed now 
and we are committed to working with our state and local partners to make it a reality. The Hobo Bridge Project will offer enormous economic benefits and streamline the movement of freight, freight in Will County. Like other regional and national projects of significance, it will encourage job creation and be a strong candidate for future federal funding. As the population grows and the local economy improves, Will County faces many challenges across all modes of transportation. Progress continues on the Ileana Expressway and the South Suburban Airport, two major infrastructure investments impacting our county that expand the transportation system's ability to handle future growth. We continue to work with the county board ad hoc committee, local leaders, and other stakeholders to keep the focus of the needs of our residents and area businesses. Two weeks ago, Governor Pat Quinn was in Will County to announce Bolt Field has been purchased by the state of Illinois and will serve as the first runway for the South Suburban Airport. Governor Quinn also announced the Illinois Department of Transportation will host an industry forum in September to bring immediate focus to this project. IDOT previously issued a request for information from firms with expertise in marketing the South Suburban Airport. After many years of discussing whether or not the airport should be built, we now see a plan taking shape to move this important project forward. Federal approval for the Ileana Expressway is expected by the end of this year. Then IDOT can begin to acquire land and select the private sector partner before beginning construction of the roadway in 2015. With a grant from IDOT, Will County is leading the effort to coordinate land use, transportation and economic development planning among multiple jurisdictions in the Ileana Corridor. We are part partnering with Kankakee County, the villages Beecher, Manhattan, Piatone and the city of, city of Wilmington. Other stakeholders, groups will join us in creating a vision for the corridor to capture local benefit from the Ileana and the future growth in the county. Planning is expected to begin early next year. The U.S. Department of Transportation announced the Ileana corridor is el eligible for low-cost federal funds. This decision confirms the regional and national significance of the Ileana and its potential for a public-private partnership. Congress has Congress expanded federal funding in the last transportation bill to jumpstart large-scale projects like the Ileana, which would qualify for more than $150 million in federal loans. Critical projects like the Ileana Expressway and the South Suburban Airport have potential to expand Will County's transportation footprint. Due to this potential, the, the county is preparing now for the future growth and development. We want to bring all stakeholders together to foster collaboration and position our communities to benefit from these transformative infrastructure investments. In the past year, county staff has successfully secured state and federal grant funding to develop plans around important highway corridors in the county. The Land Use Department led an effort to create a plan to promote tourism opportunities along the Illinois Route 53 corridor, which is also historic Route 66, south of I-80 to Braidwood. The plan highlights the corridor's many cultural and national assets and that make this area a potential tourist destination bringing additional revenue to local communities. This road provides access to the Madawin Tall Grass Prairie, the Abraham Lincoln Veterans Cemetery, Chicagoland Speedway, and a long list of other valuable local attractions, which is another important reason we must uh, address the challenges of increased truck traffic. The county is also helping to fund and is a steering committee member ongoing study for the future development potential of Illinois 
394 Route 1 corridor in eastern Will County. The villages of Crete and Beecher, along with several towns in South Cook County, are currently reviewing the results of a market study that considers future population and employment numbers, real estate and land use trends, and other factors influencing future development in eastern Will County. Another project that warrants mentioning is a joint effort between Will County, the Village of University Park, the South Suburban Mayors and Managers Association, and Governor State University in eastern Will County. The total cost of this project is $4 million, and Will County will share equally in the 20% local match with the Village of University Park. We will contribute $400,000 to reconstruct the main road that leads into GSU and also serves the area's only metro train station. Without this partnership, this project may not have gone forward. These are the type of cooperative efforts our residents expect and deserve. With more demand and fewer resources, the county must plan comprehensively to effectively address our transportation needs. Over the next two years, the county's Division of Transportation will complete an update on our long-range transportation plan to the year 2040. In addition to prioritizing projects on the county highway system, the updated plan will study freight movement in the county and explore other transit options for our residents. Through the efforts of Senator Tino Tarrant and Representative Manley, a bill was passed last fall which will allow the long-awaited Weber Road and I-55 interchange project to move forward. Nearly half the population of Will County lives in the four northern townships, Wheatland, Plainfield, DuPage, and Lockport. Anyone who lives, works, or shops along the Weber Road corridor understands the daily challenges of travel in this area. Highway officials estimate more than 300,000 vehicles utilize this interchange each day. The next phase of engineering has begun for the improvement for inter the interchange as well as for Weber Road between 135th and 119th Streets. IDOT and Will County will share the cost of this project through a partnership with villages of Bolingbrook and Romeoville. The total project cost is estimated at more than $90 million. In support of our efforts to consolidate county government and improve efficiency, we have completed two key building acquisitions in downtown Joliet. The former Social Security building located at 158 North Scott Street will soon house the Will County Recorder of Deeds and the Will County Corner. We anticipate retrofitting of this building to begin in early September with completion in December. Moving the Recorder of Deeds office will save the county approximately $250,000 per year in rental costs and pay for the cost of acquiring and remodeling this building in a relatively short time frame. We also face a critical need for a new and modern courthouse. Our current courthouse was built in the 1960s to serve a population of 250,000. Today our population has tripled and this building can no longer effectively serve our needs. Visitors are required to wait in long lines outside year round to pass through a single security gate. Crowded hallways outside courtrooms pose security challenge because defendants in custody are often, often passing in close proximity to victims and the general public. A modern courthouse will be equipped with enhanced security and technology to facilitate more efficient court services. We cannot prepare for the future if we remain in the past. A new courthouse and other capital projects must be given high priority. The county has negotiated the purchase of the first Midwest Bank building, which is, plan, is the planned footprint for a new courthouse. In the short term, some county operations will be moved into this building as plans for the new courthouse are created. 
Will County continues to utilize new technologies that improve resident services and employee productivity. We are investing in tools to enhance collaboration to make the quality of accessibility to our county services. One example is the streamlining of operations with a partnership between our purchasing department led by Rita Weiss, our finance department led by Karen Hennessy, and Steve Weber, our county treasurer. Together, these offices have initiated an automated payment process through a direct deposit service to the vendors. This change will result in large savings in time, postage, and paper resources as it will eliminate the need to prepare checks and envelopes for mailing payments to vendors. Now our vendors will be paid by electronic funds transfers in the same fashion a majority of our employees are paid. Through a cooperative effort between the County Executive's Office, Supervisor of Assessments Rhonda Novak, County Clerk Nancy schultz Boots, and the County Treasurer. We have completed a full tax cycle, uh, one full tax cycle of our upgraded real estate tax system. The inaugural year has been a success. These upgrades include barcoding of forms, digitizing the judgment books, and a complete rewrite of the real estate general ledger. These innovations, although not often seen by the average Will County resident, are improving the efficiency of county government and allowing us to cut our operational cost. I want to applaud Speaker Brooks and the members of the county board for embracing new technology and taking the leap to go paperless with their agendas and related business. Through the use of iPads, the county board will significantly reduce the staff time and the necessary supplies to prepare meeting agendas, make information more accessible to the general public, and to promote greater transparency of the county board process. The offices under the executive branch are completing a redesign of the county's website to enable our residents to obtain important information more easily. We will continue to add relevant content to our website and streamline searches. The County Executive's Office is also active in the world of social media, which has become an indispensable venue for conveying timely information. As a new generation of residents begin to engage with county government, it is critical that we <clears throat> update our communication strategies. We look to build on the use of our social media and other 21st century communication strategies. The vision to improve paratransit trans transportation services across Will County began in 2007 when the Executive's Office created the Coordinated Paratransit Steering Committee led by Nick Palmer. This effort sought to bring all the stakeholders together to identify ways to improve public transportation for our disabled and senior residents. Through funding from a Regional Transportation Authority grant, Will County hired a consultant to inventory the existing services, create a directory, and make recommendations on how we can improve the service options. In early 2010, these findings were published. We learned several communities successfully operated fair transit services in their, in their areas, but was no coordinated effort to move residents from one area to another. More recently, through a second RTA-funded grant, Will County was able to hire Wendy Garlick as our county mobility manager to coordinate transit rides at a lower cost to more users. In 2013, Will Ride was launched with the support of the county board and is already coordinating specialized transit service to areas of the county which have limited or no fixed route service services. Currently, the Will Ride program offers service to seven townships in Will County, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. We continue to work to expand these services in cooperation with a growing group of partners. We have consolidated our transportation page and now offer a one-stop shop 
for transit information at, at willcountyillinois.com. Our next step is to utilize the county's website to implement an online, online ride scheduling program. Will County is home to 41,000 veterans, and I'm proud of the many services we are able to provide to those who sacrifice so much for our freedom. Our Veterans Assistance Commission works hard to connect veterans with financial assistance for food, rent, and utilities, help them to obtain their benefits, and advocate for veterans who are applying for grants to help make that transition from military life to civilian life. The VAC provides a free shuttle service for veterans from its office at 128 Scott Street to the Joliet Community-Based Outpatient Clinic on the campus of the former Silver Cross Hospital or to the Heinz VA Hospital in Maywood. The Joliet Clinic offers veterans outstanding health care, including primary care, women's health care, physical and speech therapy, as well as programs to help homeless veterans. The clinic also offers extensive mental health services, such as mental health assessments, individual and group counseling, and treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. There are plans to expand the services at the clinic to include podiatry, x-rays, and, un and ultra ultrasound, and respiratory therapy. We are fortunate to have a state-of-the-art clinic in Will County to provide services to the nearly 100,000 veterans within our region. To help prepare our veterans for the civil, uh, civilian workplace, Will County has joined with Waste Management to create the Lee Edelman Will County Veterans Employment Advocacy Project. This program helps veterans use their military skills to become job ready through paid internship with Will County employers. In the first three months of this program, we have placed 12 veterans in internships with some of the leading companies in Will County. And we are actively working with more than 20 other veterans to get them ready for the job market. A positive partnership has emerged in the Chicago metro area. Led by Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle and county leaders from the suburban Collar Counties, the first of its kind, this partnership promotes working together to promote the competitiveness of the entire Chicago region, both locally and abroad. Had an early, an early example of success for this partnership occurred in May of this year when the Chicago Metro Region was selected by U.S. Secretary of Commerce Penny Pritzker as one of the 12 communities to be part of the Investing and Manufacturing Communities Partnership to highlight the area's role as one of the nation's top metal manufacturing regions, the cities of Joliet and Chicago have joined more than 20 other entities in northeastern Illinois as part of the Chicago Metro Metal Consortium. With the designation as a manufacturing community, the Chicago Metro region will receive some priority for federal funding. Will County is a significant partner in the Chicago metro region and continues to attract manufacturing companies from around the globe. This regional group is now focusing its efforts on boosting exports from the region and coordinating truck permitting among local jurisdictions to keep our region economically competitive. Balancing the needs of business with the quality of our life, our quality of life of, of our residents does not need to be an either or a either or proposition. However, it will require all of us to be engaged and working together to find solutions to complex problems. I'm committed to, to working with our bipartisan county colleagues to address challenges on a regional scale so that we can prosper in the years ahead. I expect to be able to report many more positive from these joint efforts. In July, the U.S. Congress passed Workforce 
Innovation and Opportunity Act, which authorizes the continuation of the important assistance to our Workforce Services Division offers to our residents. This county department provides career counseling, skills assessment, and financial assistance for occupational skills training and job matching for those seeking employment. We will soon be launching an effort targeting the long-term unemployed in the hopes that we can get more of these local residents back into the workforce. This effort will call on both private and public uh, sector partners. In July 2013, the Will County Health Department, led by Director John Cicero in our Will County Community Health, uh, Health Center, led by CEO Mary Mar Mar Marigos, Mar Marigos, excuse me, each received competitive grants designed to enroll eligible residents for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. Specially trained and in-person in -person counselors have conducted more than 10,000 face-to-face meetings with residents who want to learn more about affordable health care options. Our counselors have conducted more than 120 pre community presentations and have answered more than 11,000 phone calls from residents seeking information about coverage options. To date, more than 3,100 residents have signed up with the help of the Will County Navigators, and our efforts will continue. The county has already submitted an application for 2015 Affordable Care Act dollars and expects to receive notification of the new grants by September 1. Again, we continue to lead the battle against the presence of heroin in our communities. Through the efforts of Will County Helps, we have hosted many community forums and brought a, brought a heroin prevention curriculum to several Will County schools. It appears our efforts are working because in 2013, we recorded nearly a 30% reduction in the number of heroin overdose deaths in Will County from 53 in 2012 to 38 overdose in 2013. So far this year, we are encouraged by a significant reduction in heroin overdose deaths and will continue to make heroin education and prevention our priority. This year, we're expanding this curriculum to five middle schools in the Valley, Valley View School District. Initial evaluation has revealed that students are learning important information about heroin and its high rate of addiction. We are proud to fund this curriculum through a competitive federal, federal grant from the De Department of Justice. Education is a centerpiece in our fight against heroin. We are also implementing a Will County Narcan distribution program, which will train and equip law enforcement across the county with Naloxone, a powerful drug that will reduce the effects of a heroin overdose. Through our health department, officers will be trained to administer a nasal dosage of naloxone, uh, own, uh, which will immediately receive an overdose victim, or revive, I'm sorry. Our police officers are often first on the scene of an overdose. In having this training and potent antidote, it is proven to save lives. This program is also funded through a Department of Justice grant. Our hope is these programs together will educate people about the dangers of heroin and continue to the reduce the number of overdose deaths. We won't rest until heroin is driven out of Will County. I want to reiterate, Will County is a special place. We have a diverse community that includes rural, suburban, and urban communities with people of all nationalities and races. We also have a strong economy and we are well positioned to build on our past success and make Will County even a greater place to call home. This vision will not happen without proactive work and a commitment by all of us, by all of us to make Will County a success. If we want to enrich our community, we must be ready to act on our plans.
Next month, I will present my annual budget address. This blueprint for the fiscal year 2015 is a proposal that the county board will review and make changes as they see fit. I welcome the collaboration that has been involved with making the decision to put the resources behind the plans we approve. This year's budget proposal will include a formal five-year capital plan for expenditures on roads, infrastructures, county facilities, and technology upgrades. We must fund these projects now or risk falling behind. I am confident that we will work together to reach the decisions that will move Will County forward. Thank you very much. Please continue. 
Our first case is uh, case 6183-MB2. This is a map amendment from C2 to C3 in Jackson Township. Uh, committee recommends approval, and I so move. Move by Mr. Second. Weibel. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Adamick. Any questions on this case? Any, any questions? Previous roll. Previous roll by Mr. Babbage. Second by Mr. Ferry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Next foot is resolution 14-207, appeal of the decision of the Will County Planning and Zoning Commission, case 6170-B. This is a change in a uh, uh, subdivision in Mokina, allowing for a variance of the front yard setback from 30 feet to 15 feet so they can extend their uh, uh, single car garage further. Uh, committee recommends approval, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Mr. Frizz alone. Any questions? Previous roll call by Mr. Izzo, second by Ms. Collins. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 motion is carried. Uh, that concludes our business. Our next meeting is September 9th. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Next, we move on to the Finance Committee, Mr. Wilhelmy, Chairman. Thank you very much. Let me get this, try to pull my meeting back up again. Sometimes paper is better. Good morning. I have a couple of uh, reports to put on file. Is my, my mic on? Do you hear me? Yeah, it's supposed to be. All right. The first is a report from the Illinois Department of Revenue showing sales tax remitted to Will County for the month of June to be 1,631,000, the RTA tax of 1,954,000, totaling 3,585,000. And uh, they have a second report from the Will County Treasurer for uh, his, his Treasurer's report for June and a quarterly financial report for the three months ended February 28th from Duffy Blackburn. And the fourth one is the Will County quarterly financial report for six months ending May 31st. And that's also from Duffy Blackburn. I move to put these on file. Moved by Mr. Will Helmley, second by Mr. Winfrey. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Mr. Muses, would you like to record yes. it as yes? Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, I have to go into public hearing for the uh, to discuss fee increases for the recorder's office. And so I move. So move to uh, go into public hearing. Moved by Mr. Wilhelm, second by Mr. Babbage. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Sure. Zagrosi? Yes. Eustis? Yes. Howard? Yes. Izzo? Yes. Moran? Yes. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Benefield? I'd like to abstain from this vote. Bible? Yes. Freitag? Yes. Balich? Yes. Rizalone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Adamick? Yes. Babbage? Yes. Wilhelm? Yes. Hart? Yes. Mayor? Yes. McDermott? No. Weigel? Yes. Collins? Yes. Pardon? Barry? Yes. And Brooks? Yes. Affirmative, one negative, one abstention. Okay. Only affirmative, one no, one abstention. We are in public hearing. Mr. Wilhelmy. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we've had a proposal from the uh, from Karen Stuckel, the reporter of deeds, to uh, I don't know if it's a fee increase necessarily, but a fee change. Um, she has been offered the ability to, uh, by an outside vendor, to have access to records via the internet. And, um, and basically, I just want to know if there's any questions uh, from the public 
about this new fee proposal. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to ask any questions, make any comments, make a statement? Anyone from the public on this issue? Any, any speaker from the public that wishes to be recognized? Mr. Wilhelm? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Um, as a representative of the public, I would like to say uh, in this meeting that I have some real concerns with the information that was uh, brought to us at the Finance Committee. Uh, several questions that come, on to, me, come to me. Um, one being that we are entering potentially into a very long-term contract with a single vendor without, a, without an RFP. Um, there are a number of things about this issue that I'm having a problem with. And um, I would like to see this eventually tabled here and brought back to the committee for further discussion um, because of the way uh, it was presented to us in committee. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Judge. Did I, or Mr. Frizzalone? Mr. Mr. Frizzalone? Yeah, I, I, I agree with Mr. Mayor. Until, until we get costs and know what the costs are that we're basing our fees on, I don't see how we can move our fee up or down. So I, I, I too agree that we need to table this issue when, we, when it comes up. Thank you. Valley? Yeah, I was going to say pretty much what uh, Mr. Frisalone said. Uh, earlier this morning we talked about it in the caucus and uh, it occurs to me that if uh, the office was given us if, if for the general fund $100,000, we were already charging too much of a fee. So uh, I really want to find out what the actual cost is to do it. Thank you. Mr. Mustis? Well, we look at uh, user fees, but what the county is trying to do is recoup its cost. And no more, no less. You know, generally, uh, we probably lag a little behind in fees. We probably throw a little bit more cost. Uh, the public uh, is a little bit more cost in general revenue than, than fee revenue. Uh, but we do still have to have a justification of raising fees. Uh, sometimes going to new services may be a justification. Uh, uh, but just saying you want to go to a new service, and this is what a vendor might cost, therefore you can increase the fee, is absolutely, the methodology just is not very good. Uh, uh, we did use a firm for many years that would come in and actually do the analysis for us of actual cost. And, and you know, I, I would say that it would be difficult for me to vote for any fee increases unless there really is a thorough analysis, not just on this particular program, but on the whole fee and operational structure. What is supported by fees and what is supported by general revenue? Uh, I, I, I think until that's done, it would be premature to bring it to this board without that information. Uh, uh, so, I, uh, as not only a representative of the public, but as a member of the public, would have a very difficult time supporting uh, uh, a fee increase without a thorough analysis of cost versus expenses. So, uh, uh, yeah, I noticed the public hearing, we'll talk about it at the, at the board level, but I want to make my comments, uh, put them in the record of the public hearing. Thank you. Mr. Grossi. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to turn on to something that went in during our caucus as well this morning. We had a lot of discussion concerning this topic. Well, and we too are in agreement as far as having it remain the fact. Mr. Moran. Uh, this was, this was a public hearing and now we're all discussing this at the board level, it seems like. And I, I'd make the motion to come out of public hearing. And I'm hearing, before I do that, I'm hearing two different things. Uh, some people are saying that they'd like to table this, yet they want more information, and other people are talking about sending it back to the committee. If we table it, there is it's not going back to the committee to get that information. So if, if the board would indulge me, I would make a motion to end the public hearing, and then I would ask for, a, I would make a motion 
to send this, to recommit this to the executive committee so we can find the answers to find out where we're at with this whole thing. <laughs> Motion made uh, to uh, end the uh, public hearing. Second. 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 Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Mr. Rosen? Yes. The public. <laughs> Mustis? Yes. Howard? Yes. Izzo? Yes. Moran? Yes. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Benefield? Same. Bible? Yes. Freitag? Yes. Ballage? Yes. Rizalone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Adamick? Yes. Babbage? Yes. Wilhelming? Yes. Hart? <coughs> Mayor? Yes. McDermott? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Collins? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up. Wait, Chair. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Twenty-one affirmative, one abstention. Twenty-one affirmative. We are out of public hearing. Mr. Moran. I make a motion to recommit this issue to the executive committee. Second. Second by Mr. Adamick. Any discussion? Previous roll. Um, previous roll by Mr. Babbage. Second. Second by Mr. Wilhelmy. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary. Um, abstain. You want abstain? Please say. Mr. Executive? Yes, Mr. Howard. I, I just had some discussion <coughs> on, as a county board member discussed this. Well, we sent it back to me. I know, I know. That's fine. Okay, thank you. I'll reserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilhelm. <coughs> All right, so uh, my, my report kind of got hijacked from me. But. <laughs> thank you. Um, getting back to the business. I do wanted to say on that, that issue that we, we are going to discuss the, the fee structure and, and I talked to Karen a lot this morning and she is well prepared to, to uh, fund all the information that, that you guys are looking for. Uh, again, the, the fee structure is changed. It wasn't necessarily an increase and, um, and this will all be discussed at committee and it will be going to the executive committee. Thank you. Anyway, going on, uh, that was number two. Number three is uh, resolution 14209, transferring funds within the VAC budget. Uh, the VAC, as was uh, as Larry talked about, is doing a tremendous job in helping our veterans and with the, just with assistance as needed. And so they need to use up some of their cash reserves in order to continue to help our, our veterans in Will County. And I so move. Second. second. Moved by Mr. Wilhelm, second by Mr. McDermott. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll. Previous roll by Mr. Adamick, second, or Mr. Bible, was it? Mr. Bible, second by Mr. Adamick. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, next resolution is 14210. Oh, Mr. Benefield, would you like to be a yes on this? Yes, please, yes. Thank you. Number 14210, authorizing county executive to execute necessary tax documents, or necessary documents for delinquent tax program. And I so move. Moved we'll by Mr. Wilhelm, second. second by Mr. Ferry. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. White, Rice, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion is carried. Thank you. Next is number 14211, increasing appropriations in the property insurance budget. This was the result of a, a property audit that we had done. Uh, basically, we found that we uh, have more value than, than we had originally thought in, in our last uh, property insurance premium, so we have to pay a little bit more for our growth, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Wilhelmy, second by Ms. Hart. Any questions? Three roll by Ms. Collins, second by Mr. Izzo. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. And finally, number 14212 is a Resolution increasing appropriations in the Sheriff's off duty assignment fund, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Wilhelmy, second <coughs> by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Adamick, second by Mr. Howard. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Not very, motion is carried. Thank you very much. That concludes my uh, resolutions. Our next finance committee meeting is scheduled for September 2nd at 10 a.m., and hope to see everyone there. And have a great Labor Day. And, uh, Take care. Thank you, Steve.
Moving on, Public Works Transportation Committee, Mr. Adam McChairman. Uh, good morning, Mr. Executive and fellow board members. I have uh, a few items to place on file. The first is a public notice for proposed issuance of a Clean Air Act permit, uh, program permit for Vector Pipeline LP Jolly Compressor Station in Elwood. Also have a, a public notice for the proposed renewal of the Clean Air Act permit, program permit for University Park Energy LLC and a public notice for proposed renewal of the Clean Air Act permit, program permit, Lincoln Generating Facility, LLC in Manhattan. And finally, a uh, public notice proposed renewal of the Clean Air Act permit, program permit, uh, for Creek Energy Venture, LLC, and I assume move by Mr. Adam, second by Mr. Moran. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great motion is carried. Our second item of, of business is, is uh, resolution 14213. It's confirming award of contract to D Construction Inc. in the amount of $493,656.11 uh, for West Frontage Road, County Highway 17 over Grant Creek and County Board District 6. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Adamick, second by Mr. Reitak. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Ferry, second by Mr. Hart. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. Our third item is uh, resolution 14214. It's a resolution for improvement by the county under the Illinois Highway Code for West Frontage Road, County Highway 17 over Grant Creek and County Board District 6 using motor fuel tax funds in the amount of $600,000 in ISO. Moved by Mr. Adamick, second by Ms. Freitag. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Babbage, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion is carried. Resolution 14215 uh, is a confirming award of contract to PT Ferro Construction Company in the amount of $110,000, $368.55 uh, for Joliet Road District for overlay in County Board District 8. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Brooks. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Reed, second by Mr. Bible, excuse me, second by Ms. McDermott. All in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. Not great. Motion has carried. Our fifth item of business is resolution 14216, confirming a word of contract to Emulsico, Inc. in the amount of $64,800 for the Washington Road District Seal Code Oil, various locations in County Board District 1, and I still move. Moved by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Howard. Any questions? Great. Question, Mr. Howe. Yeah, I, I actually, an item for discussion on this. Uh, basically, th this is where those MFT dollars come into play out, out in the eastern side. Uh, recently, the uh, uh, Indiana app, they had to do a total closure on it. Uh, and a special thanks to Bruce Gould because it was a very touchy situation. Uh, we have alternate routes around there. Well, part of these roads that are being tarred and chipped with this MFT money are part of the alternate route. So. Uh, currently, they're they're gravel. They were they were tar and chip. They tore them back up. They're currently gravel now or whatever. But this is uh, an example of uh, these MFT dollars that work in our roads, and, and our roads are getting pounded out there on, on the east side, especially with the truck traffic. So that was my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, previous roll by Mr. Will Helmy, second by Mr. Moran. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. <coughs> Our sixth item of business is Resolution 14217, authorizing approval of an additional professional services agreement for design engineering services phase two with Willett Hoffman and Associations for roadway and other work on Cedar Road, County Highway 4 over Spring Creek and County Board District 7, using our allotment of RTA tax funds in the amount of $37,314.02. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Adamick, second by Mr. Perry. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Rice, second by Mr. Bible. All in favor, signal set by say aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. Resolution 14218 is providing title commitment reports for use by the county from Wheatland Title Guarantee Company for Cedar Road, County Highway 4, over Spring Creek in County Board District 7 using RTA tax funds in the amount of $2,500 in ISO. Moved Move by Mr. Adamick, second by Mr. Weigel. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Grossi, second by Mr. Brooks. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary motion has carried. Our eighth item of business is resolution 14219, providing title commitment reports for use by the county from Wheatland Title Guarantee Company for Wilmington Theodore Road 
over the west branch of Fort Creek and County Board District 6 using motor fuel tax funds in the amount of $2,500. And I assume. Moved by Mr. Adams, second by Ms. Rijak. Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Hart, second by Ms. McDermott. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Our last item of business is uh, resolution 14-220, authorizing an agreement between the County of Will and Commonwealth Edison Company for reimbursement for locate, relocating facilities along Laraway Road and County Highway 74 at the intersection of with Spencer Road and County Board District 12 using the uh, RTA tax funds in the amount of $96,200 and I so moved by Mr. Adamick, second by Mr. Bible. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Grossi, second by Mr. Howard. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. Uh, lastly, I'd like to remind uh, of our next uh, meeting, which is uh, 2nd of September at 8.30. We invite all who wish to attend. And uh, one last item. Uh, this school has pretty much started, or will be starting sh uh, shortly. Uh, be careful on the roads, the, the kids that are going to the school bus or walking to school. Just be mindful of them as we uh, get into the habit of, of sending our kids off to school and give them a break. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item, the Judicial Committee, Mr. Bible. <coughs> good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, morning Ray. Madam Clerk, good morning to you and all my fellow board members. Uh, Judicial Committee has no resolutions or reports for this month. I do <coughs> want to remind all committee members, however, that we will be meeting on September 2nd. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. For Thank you. Next, we go to Public Health and Safety Committee. Mr. Babich, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and fellow morning, board members. Chairman. Today I have one uh, resolution to bring forward. That's uh, 14221 awarding bid for diabetic supplies for Sunny Hill Nursing Home. That will go to uh, professional medical out of New Lenox for the tune of $12,933.61. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Babbage, seconded by, uh, by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Moran, seconded by Ms. Hart. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. Mr. Chairman, Public Health and Safety Committee is scheduled for September 11th, 2014 at 8.30 a.m. And I finished my, uh, my report. Hope you're feeling better, buddy. Yes, I am. Thank Good. you. I can see it in your step. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we go to the Insurance Personnel Committee. Ms. Zagrosi, Chairperson. Good morning, County Executive. Good morning. Good morning. We have three items this morning which we'll be voting on. The first is uh, Resolution 14-222, which is renewal of the Comprehensive Route to Medical Plan with Ann Hewitt and I sum Moved by Mr. Grossi, second by Mr. Adams. Any questions? Previous roll. Previous roll by Mr. Bible, second by Mr. Perry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. I think we're going to have to take on it. Next so is no. item number 14-223. Approval of the active program and the retiree okay. group insurance premium rate equivalents, and I still got it. Moved by Mrs. Rosie, second by Ms. Collins. Any questions? We get rolled by Mr. Frizzalone, second by Mr. Isabel. Isabel, all in favor, second by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion has carried. And the last item is number 14 224 which oh, is yeah, the adoption yeah. of a successor yeah, got collective it. bargaining agreement between the County of Will, the County of Will Sheriff, the Metropolitan Alliance of Police, Will County Sheriff's Police Management Association, Chapter 123, and I so move. by Mr. Rosen, second by Mr. Moran. Any questions? Three roll by Mr. Will, second by Mr. Babbage. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion has carried. Thank you. And our next committee meeting is scheduled for September 9th at 9.30. And of course, everyone is invited and encouraged to attend. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Moving on to the Legislative Policy Committee. Mr. Howard, Chairman. Uh, good morning, Mr. Executive and fellow board Howard. members. Uh, we have no resolutions to bring for you this morning, but, but uh, we do have a uh, presentation uh, by Mr. Uh, Jim Smith and Mr. Brett Garson from the uh, Smith Dawson in Andrews firm, and I graciously agreed to keep it under two hours. Hey, Jim, how you been? Good to see you. Good to see you. 
morning, gentlemen. State your names and addresses, uh, office address, Jim. I will, but I'll have to say, if I have two hours, I better go back to the typewriter and prepare a speech. Uh, good morning, Mr. Executive. I'm Jim Smith. I'm uh, president of Smith, Dawson, and Andrews in Washington, D.C. I'm joined today by my colleague, Mr. Brett Garson, who is general counsel of Smith, Dawson, and Andrews. Uh, County Executive Walsh, Speaker Brooks, caucus chairs uh, Zagrosi and Mr. Lustis, uh, Chairman Howard, Vice Chairman Suzanne Hart, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be here today. As you know, we are the eyes and ears uh, for Will County in Washington, D.C. Uh, we have been uh, honored to have represented the county now for a number of years and uh, very uh, honored with the partnership that we've developed and the success, I think, that we've, uh, we've had at the federal level. As you know, we started uh, the process for this current legislative session late last year and concluded in December of 2013 with the development of the county's federal agenda. That uh, proposal was adopted by the county board and it was followed by visits to Washington both by the county executive, uh, the leadership of the county board, and a number of the county board members. Uh, we had a very aggressive and uh, concise focused agenda uh, focused on many of the issues that the county executive addressed in his state of the county, transportation, water resources, job training, workforce investment, uh, as well as local projects. I'd like to report on just a few of those. I don't want to take too much time, uh, but I am pleased to say that uh, while Congress has been assailing over many national issues like immigration reform, they have managed to uh, to pass some legislation, and some of those uh, items were of high priority to the county, including passage of the Water Resources Development Act, which is the water program operated by the Corps of Engineers, and of course, as we know, we have critical waterways right here in the county. Uh, so that program has been authorized for a number of years and will, will serve the county well. In addition to that, uh, the executive spoke about the Workforce Investment Act. That was one of the high priorities for the county in our federal agenda. Um, and I'm pleased to report that Congress managed to come together on that program as well, compromised, and uh, earlier this year in July, the President signed a reauthorization from the uh, Workforce Investment Act. And one of the things I should point out in there, one of the priorities of the, of the county uh, in that legislation was that the county and the locals retain local control over the uh, funding and expenditure of, of those funds. That was a controversial issue and a contested issue. Uh, but fortunately, Congress uh, uh, did the right thing and pleased to report that local control of workforce investment remains with the county. Um, there were a number of other bills. I don't want to go into a lot of detail. We did give you a short report, which you can refer to. If you have any questions, feel free to follow up with me. Uh, I will mention, though, and I'll ask Mr. Garson to address these issues, uh, two other items that were very important to the county is, and continue to be is the Prairie View Recycling and disposal facility, and I'm pleased to report that uh, we were able to get legislation included in the uh, defense authorization bill. Uh, Brett will give you an update on that. And another item that I think is going to pay uh, dividends for a long time for the county is the Investing in Manufacturing Communities Partnership designation that the executive spoke about, and that was one that uh, we spent a lot of time in Washington highlighting with the Department of Commerce when we met with them. Uh, and it puts Will County at the forefront for federal grants for years to come. So, Brett, would you like to talk a little bit about those? Uh, Jim, Jim, thank you, and the County Board, uh, County Executive Walsh, thanks for having us today. Um, as Jim kind of gave you a very comprehensive overview of what's going on in Washington, I'll just quickly uh, talk about the two points that I think have been some uh, strong victories for the county in Washington this year. Uh, of course, uh, as many of you know, there's uh, restrictive language uh, with the Prairie View landfill, um, tr the collection of trash inside the county and mus municipalities that have uh, that are located in part of the county, um, and as well as the cap on the uh, the year that the um, the landfill can operate until. And so, with the help of Congressman Kinzinger's office. And uh, both Senator uh, Kirk and Senator Durbin, we've been we've worked with them. And in May, when the National Defense Authorization Act was passed, language uh, extending the allowable use of the landfill 
um, was included as part of the, the final product that, uh, that passed the house. And that will extend the landfill for 15 years, which is, which is great for the county. Um, we're, not, we're not done with this. We, we'd like to get more local control so that you get to decide on um, what trash comes into your landfill. And that, that's a, another fix that we're working on, as well as trying to completely um, eliminate the cap uh, going forward. Of course, we're happy right now um, that we got the 15 year extension, but uh, we continue to work on this. Um, the, the second area that Jim talked about and, and uh, County Executive Walsh discussed in, in his address was the investing in uh, Manufacturing Communities Partnership designation. Um, th this was a huge, huge deal. There were 70 applications. It was extremely competitive. Um, and as Jim referred to earlier, when we were in Washington uh, with local leaders, local business leaders, and elected officials, we had some very high-level meetings uh, at the Department of Commerce, Commerce and the Economic Development Administration where we got information that was critical to our strategy of applying for this designation and which came into play in the final product that went forward uh, in the final application. And I think that is a big part of, of why the county and the consortium, the Cook County Consortium was successful. So I think, um, you know, I want to thank you, the, the elected officials that they come out to Washington, because it's those meetings that help us uh, execute our, our Washington strategy. Um, and what this designation is going to do is it's going to allow the county, when they go, over, go after competitive grants, and there, there's still a significant amount of money in there uh, to get a designation that allows them to, to have extra points when they're being graded for their, their application, as well as uh, extra help from each agency that's involved. And there's 13 agencies that are part of this and uh, roughly $1.3 billion in federal dollars that will be um, up, not up for grabs, but uh, eligible under competitive grant programs. So. Um, with that, I'll, I'll conclude, but those are two very exciting uh, items that, that took place in Washington this year. Thanks, Brad. Uh, so we talked about the things that Congress has accomplished. Uh, there's still a pretty big unfinished agenda, uh, not the least of which is transportation. Uh, of course, that was uh, at the forefront of our county's federal priorities. Congress, uh, unfortunately, has punted once again on reauthorization of the MAP 21 National Transportation Bill. Uh, that program would expire September 30th, uh, but because the Federal Highway Trust Fund has been running at a deficit and was at a critical stage where uh, USDOT was actually going to have to stop uh, construction projects uh, among the 50 states, Congress came together right before they recessed for the August break and they passed a short term extension of both MAP 21 and uh, short up the funding for the Highway Trust Fund that will carry over until May of next year. So there is a possibility that uh, transportation could be addressed in a lame duck if we have a lame duck, uh, but more likely it will uh, be taken up by the new Congress when it, after the new Congress is sworn in in, uh, in January. Uh, so speaking of Congress, as I mentioned, they are on recess now. They won't be back until after Labor Day. Uh, it's probably going to be a very brief session, two weeks at most. Uh, I expect that they'd probably be out by the 15th of September and uh, will not come back until after the November election. Surely there will be some sort of lame duck session. Uh, Congress has yet to enact any of the appropriations bills for the next fiscal year that starts October 1st, so probably going to do a short-term continuing resolution in September, come back in, the, in November and do a either a, an extended CR or pass an omnibus, omnibus uh, appropriations bill. So uh, that's uh, sort of the state of affairs uh, today, our mid-year report. Thank you again for the opportunity and look forward to working with you in the months to come. Thank you, Jim and Brett. Any questions? Any questions, anyone, for, for our Washington lot? Mr. Brooks. That's not really a question, just a statement, though. Uh, uh, Mr. Smith and Mr. Garrison, just thank you so much for your hospitality and kingdom work, and we learned so much. And I think we've already begun to see some of the benefits from our visit. Uh, Nick did a very good presentation, you remember, uh, for the JAG funds, and we began to see some of that. So I felt it was very effective, and I just want to thank you gentlemen for just one, being one bold. Thank you. Out there. Thank you, and as Brett said, uh, 
you know, it wouldn't be a success without the involvement of all of you. Uh, you're, you're your own best lobbyist, so when you come to Washington, you're advancing your own cause and, and helping us as well, so thank you. Any other? Yes, Mr. Bouch. And um, on the legislation for uh, uh, the water, would did the National Association of Counties uh, like that legislation? Yes, they do very much so. They're very much behind it, endorse the final bill, and uh, are very supportive. And the definition, is that's going to be tabled or it's all done? Well, they're uh, changing the def definition of water? Uh, you know, it depends on what you're talking about. It's a, it's a vast bill. Like, you're talking about the uh, the waters of the U.S. definition. Yeah, um, it's it's still a little it's a little unsettled what exactly is going to happen. As you all probably know, because uh, you're very informed, that um, it, the deadline for comments on uh, on the rulemaking were extended into September. Um, I'll be working with the county to prepare our own uh, our our own comment. Um, to be part of the public record, uh, but we're not entirely entirely sure what EPA and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is going to do on that because there's been a, a significant amount of pushback, as I'm sure you're well aware of, from is you know all of the the local government groups like NACO and U.S. Conference of Mayors, etc., um, and, and across the board with businesses um, because of several different parts of uh, that rulemaking. So. Um, I think there's a chance that it's going to get significantly uh, amended, um, but it's still, you know, we're, that's why it's important to continue to that they hear from us and why we need to, to have our voice, Will County's voice, as part of the record, and we plan on doing that. So I appreciate that comment, but yeah, it's there's a lot of pushback, so it may, things may change from where where it was released, uh, I believe in February or, or March, till. Uh, what they come back with. Any other questions? Anybody else? Well, thank you. Thank you. Know, and Brett, uh, it truly has been a uh, wonderful arrangement uh, uh, with you, uh, your organization out there as our lobbyist. And as uh, Ashton Brooks says, the hospitality that you show our members uh, when we come out there is uh, second to none. So Well, thank you very much, and uh, we are very proud to represent Will County. It's a, it's a real showcase client, and uh, of course none of this would be possible without the strong support of our congressional delegation, uh, and believe me, they know Will County. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Brett. very impressive the itinerary that they set up and then we found those closed doors I mean, the amount of elected officials that we that we met with uh, that we uh, talked with uh, they knew our issues and then uh, uh, Mr. Smith and Mr. Garson I mean they're, they're on top of it you know to put it in another term so and also uh, the vice chair uh, Suzanne would like to make a quick comment to us. I'm not going to repeat because you know we were very successful uh, in Washington DC and earlier when we were talking about poison control, it was great locally if the bills that were coming through. But not only with, you know, with Pastor and Curry and our wonderful our DC lobbyists, but Nick Palmer, you've done a great job. Bruce Greenfeld, big shout out. So a team that goes in every angle. So I just want to thank everyone who has helped. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Very nice job. Moving on, we move on to the airport uh, ad hoc committee. Mr. Moran, chairman. Capital improvement, sir. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Skip right over you, uh, Denise. We'll go to Denise Wintry, chairman of Capital Improvements. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Executive. Good morning, fellow board members. Capital Improvements Committee continues to move forward on its overall plan to upgrade county facilities. The next step in that is resolution 14225, which is the contract to remodel facilities for the coroner and the, 
and the uh, recorder of deeds, which will be awarded to Light Construction Company. And I so move. Second. 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 Moved by Ms. Winfrey, seconded by Mr. Howard. Any discussion? Good discussion, Mr. Frizzalong. Yeah, I just like to say that we're, we're spending more on this building than we, than we paid for it. I'm not saying that it might not be a good deal, but I think in the future we need to know when we're buying a building at whatever cost, what is going to be our cost to actually move into the building ahead, ahead of it? Because if it winds up being a point where we may be able to build a new facility, we might look at that. Well, I welcome your comments, Mr. Frizzalone, but uh, uh, and that's probably a good, a good maybe rule of thumb. Uh, but I think uh, that that building, when we first started talking about it, uh, the owner was up in the neighborhood of uh, two million dollars that he wanted, and uh, and we got it down uh, uh, down below about what was it, eight hundred. Eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. We uh, we currently are in a building that the Impo building that was bought for about five million dollars or less. Five million. And probably have invested another eight or ten in that building in order to make it a doable building for what we need as as a court system. Uh, as an annex to the court system and the other um, offices. So uh, that's a good rule of thumb. We should look at that. And if we want to do that, but if, uh, if uh, some of these buildings that we buy, um, I'm, sure, I'm sure we're going to uh, have that same discussion with the purchase of the first Midwest Bank also. So, I mean, uh, uh, we need to, if we're going to set our sights on doing things in downtown Joliet, that we are going to be buying, or maybe we're done purchasing uh, at this stage of the game, but uh, we are buying some buildings at uh, a lower cost, and if we're going to remodel them and make them into a building that the reason on this building uh, Mr. Frislone is that we, we plan on this building being part of the county complex for years and years to come. We could have probably just gone in there and makeshift and just did, you know, uh, and did a partway job uh, and uh, gotten by a lot cheaper. But this building is going to be part of the Will County governmental complex for years to come and we felt that at this stage of the game we should do it right and some of the things that we are doing probably could last four or five more years but why do that if we uh, go back and tear it up five years from now so so that's that's one of the that's the explanation that uh, I think that uh, we looked at when we made the decision to put this bid together so I, I didn't mean to take your Fire uh, in each, but uh, uh, that, that was that discussion. Mr. Beck and Mr. Griswold. Well, I agree with something you're saying. All I'm saying is, in the future, if we're looking at every building that comes online as a potential campus building for a downtown campus, we have to look at if we're going to lose it long term, which I know we were going to on this building, but what's the, what's the cost to build a building versus renovating a building, bringing it up to spec? and. When you bring it up to spec so that it, it can be used for the long term, is that the perfect use for that building for the people going in there? So you, you have to weigh that cost too. If it costs four million to build a brand new building, which is a million more than probably what we're going to spend on this overall, that million may be worth it if that building fits into the campus better, if that building is usable better by, you know, we had to readjust what we were putting in there just because our initial thought process didn't work that land use is going to go in there. So I, I just think we need to do a little bit more due diligence, even though we may get a, a good price on an existing building. Thank you for your comments. You're right on target, Mr. Ballage. Yeah, uh, we're talking about a Joliet campus, but we still have out somewhere in limbo the idea of making the campus somewhere else. It may be a lot cheaper and a lot better 
to get some green space land and just build everything we need the way we want it. We have plenty of parking and get away from remodeling these old buildings that have asbestos and mercury and bedrock and all the problems associated with an old building. You know, we haven't, we said, we said we're going to look into it with the white study, but everybody keeps talking about the Joliet campus. I want to hear a little bit about a green space campus. I'm sure uh, Ms. Winfrey will uh, accept that or welcome that yes, kind of discussion uh, uh, at her committee meetings at any time. I'm sure that that's always something. Uh, Yes, that is true. And as a matter of fact, to Mr. Ballas's point, White is actually checking out the green space and comparing that to the downtown campus concept so that we can make an, an informed judgment. Mr. Mister? Yeah, the, the only comment I want to make between we talk about Joliet and, and open space, it doesn't mean it's not in Joliet. I mean, I, I, I think that we need to start making a distinction between downtown Joliet and perhaps a different location that's not downtown Joliet. Doesn't mean we exclude the city of Joliet. So I just want to make that clear, that we're talking about something that may be open space, that open space could very well be in the city of Joliet. It just may not be in the downtown area of Joliet. Uh, which it was just difficult to develop in, and a little more costly to develop in, and that's why we are trying to get a little bit more of a partnership and participation Joliet. I'm sure Ms. Winfrey can touch on that. So, so without the cooperation of the city uh, 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 helping us stay down from, down from Joliet, it does make it more difficult. So uh, I, I just want to make those distinctions. It's not, you say, look outside of Joliet. It's not looking outside of Joliet. It's just looking outside of downtown. Excellent comments, Mr. Mr. Call the question. I believe I have a motion on the floor. Call the question. Yes, we do have a motion on the floor. Second. Second. Madam Clerk, call the roll. DeGrossi? Yes. Eustace? Yes. Howard? Yes. Izzo? Yes. Moran? Yes. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Bible? Yes. Freitag? Yes. Balich? Yes. Bissellum? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Adamick? Yes. Savage? Yes. Wilhelming? Yes. Hart? Yes. Mayor? Yes. McDermott? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Collins? Yes. Ferry? Yes. And Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Kaplan Kruger's committee will be in the meeting. 23 affirmative. That's that. Uh, that motion has carried. Continue, Ms. Winfrey. Kaplan Kruger's committee will meet again on September 2nd at 9.30. And we'll be glad to hear any ideas or suggestions anyone may have. Thank you very much, Denise. Now, I think I'm on the agenda. Uh, the ad hoc committee with Mr. Moran, chairman. Uh, the ad hoc committee was scheduled to meet in the month of August. Uh, IDOT in the governor's office invited the entire county board, I believe, on that date to uh, welcome them to the ribbon cutting ceremony at Bolt Field, which is the General Aviation Field immediately adjacent to the inaugural footprint of the South Suburban Airport. Uh, several board members attended that day, um, and our meeting, has been, our meeting has been rescheduled for September 4th, 2014 at 8.30 a.m. here in the County Building. Um, we expect to have a very full agenda, and I'd welcome any board members to attend. Thank you very much, John. Now, moving on to the uh, next committee, executive committee, Mr. Brooks, chairman. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, everyone. The first resolution I have is 14-226, <coughs> award bid for the video upgrade for the adult detention center, and I so move. Make a motion by Mr. Brooks, second by Mr. Grossi. Any questions? Previous roll. Previous roll, roll call by Mr. Babbage, second by Mr. Ferry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion is carried. Mr. Brooks. 14 227. Excuse me a minute. Uh, I was handed his uh, 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 warrant uh, here. Yeah. Mr. Mr. O'Leary, Mr. O'Leary. Oh, you're hiding back there. Oh. Mr. Uh, our warden of the jail, uh, Michael O'Leary, was asked if he could have permission to speak to this board after we passed 
that resolution okay. to give an update on the video visitation issues. Oh, okay. I'll be giving the update. State your name for the for the clerk. My name is uh, Jerry Udera. I'm the under sheriff. Thank you, Jerry. As you know, the original uh, video visitation system went down in June due to a lightning strike. Uh, we found out that the auto patch system was damaged. The system was a piece of equipment was no longer manufactured, and we had to look for an alternative. With the county board and the insurance, we found the funding, and we worked to get what is called a Knox matrix. This was installed on August 7th. The system was up and running with no issues. And then on August 11th, staff noticed that there were a few minor glitches with the system late in the day. On August 12th, we found additional issues. We contacted the vendor. The vendor arrived on scene. On 8-13, the system went totally down. We immediately notified the state's attorney's office, public defender's office, chief judge, <coughs> notified inmates via kiosk, the bar association, and we posted it on the web that the system was down. On 8-13, our maintenance, along with the contractor, reestablished the point-to-point -point system that we used after the system initially went down. And we went into restrictive visitation mode, which included one visitation per inmate per week, and attorney visits in person. To date, we have received no complaints. This week, Monday through Wednesday, we've accomplished 252 visits, 178 were from family, 74 were from attorneys. The piece of equipment that we're looking for, this Knox matrix, is due to be delivered tomorrow. It's projected to be installed next Wednesday and Thursday, and we are going to be adding additional surge protection to it. And once it's up and running, we will notify everybody by reverse system that the system is up and running at full capacity. This report on the video visitation system. Thank you. Any, any questions for the under sheriff? Thank you. Thank yes, you. Mr. Fraser Long. <coughs> so the, the, the 92000 we spent was for this piece that's coming. <coughs> that was part of it? That, that piece was originally installed, and there was a problem with that piece of equipment. They tried to repair it, repair it on scene. They couldn't. They had to send it out. So they are sending us a new one. It's part of the original contract. Correct. Right. So the original, the, the piece that we just bought, I'm going to be confident that the new, <laughs> <laughs> this is something that they see as a continuing problem that they had with other units like this? Or no, this just our one. Yeah. Any other questions for the under sheriff? Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> you can go back to your room. <laughs> Please continue, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. The next resolution, 14227, authorized the county executive to execute a contract with Robert Crown Center for Education for Heroin Education Pilot Program using 2013 JAG funds, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Brooks, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Previous roll call by Ms. Freitag, seconded by Ms. Hart, all in favor say aye. 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 Very motion is carried. 14 228, authorizing the county executive to execute a lease amendment to extend the term of a lease between the county of Will and the, and the Will County Public Commit Building Commission, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Brooks, seconded by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Previous roll. Previous roll by Mr. Babbage, seconded by Mr. Wilhelmy. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very motion is carried. 14-229, replacement hire for the county executive deputy chief of staff. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Brooks, seconded by Mr. Ferry. Any questions? I have a question. Roll by Mr. I have a question. I have oh, a question. Mr. Brooks has a question. Uh, Nick, can you tell me how to pronounce David's last name? We have it back yet. How do you pronounce his last name? Tack. Tack. Where's Mr. Tack? Hi, David. 
Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Motion is on the floor. Three, uh, three Previous roll. Roll by Mr. Wilhelm, second by Mr. Adamick. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The contrary motion has carried. Uh, 14-230, replacement hires for Sunny Hill Nursing Home, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Second. Brooks, second. second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Babbage, second by Mr. Adamick. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The contrary motion has carried. The next executive meeting is scheduled for September the 4th, 2014, 9.30 a.m. Be there or be square, and that's all I have. Uh, appointment by the county executive, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Brooks, second, second. by Mr. Adams. Any previous roll by Mr. Babbage, second by Mr. Ferry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Announcement by our common board speaker, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Uh, first, let me begin very quickly just recognize the four recognition we gave them this morning. The Shanahan 9U, uh, certainly want to congratulate that team. Uh, recovery, uh, Mr. Blasco, as you know, that touched many people all over Will County, and we certainly uh, uh, thank you for that. And the Poison Center, as well as cancer, and those two very important resolutions. Uh, Mr. Executive, I want to thank you for your address on this morning. Uh, did a very good job. Um, uh, I don't want to go all over it, but I two things I do want to mention, I, and I'll wait for the movie for the rest of it. But the first one I want to mention is the Will County Global Marketplace that you have mentioned, as well as you sit on the ISFAC Council, which are two very important things. As you know, we've been discussing a lot of traffic roles in that area, in that corridor, but that's because we are a global uh, marketplace. And those traffic uh, roles are created because there's so many companies and so forth uh, attracted Will County, and that's a good thing. And I'm glad you're proactive and aware of the traffic situation out there, and we've been having meetings and talking about that as well. And then I just want to uh, just conclude by saying, um, I know you all been waiting on summer for a long time, but these three days of this weekend, you might get it. It says it's going to be over 90 the next three days. Yes. So if you have, if you missed it over the last few weeks, then this weekend may be the time for you for the summertime. And I certainly want to wish you all, we come back here to be fall time, and after Labor Day, have a nice weekend, a nice uh, Labor Day weekend, and have a very good summer that's coming up. And God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker Brooks. Next, we have uh, Democratic Caucus Chair, Diane Zagrosi. Thank you. Um, I, too, would like to acknowledge the proclamations that were read this morning. Um, they were all wonderful, without a doubt. Um, County Executive Walsh, I'd like to also thank you for your presentation this morning. It certainly highlights all of the good things that are going on in our county. And much of this is not only to the efforts of what goes on in the executive office and by this board, but certainly our employees. They're dedicated staff, and they are around the county and making things happen. So again, thank you to them. I have one event that I would like to highlight. It's coming up this Saturday, um, the 23rd at Harris Casino. And it is a function for the Bill Cornyn Center for Independent Living and having their annual dinner dance, uh, which is being titled this year, uh, Yellow Brick Road to Independence. There are still a few tickets uh, that are available for this weekend's event. It starts at 6.30, it goes until 10.30. Uh, fine dining and dancing, and just lots of fun. So again, if any of you do have the free time and are not already booked or scheduled to come, you try and clear your schedules to be able to uh, well, with us. And that's basically about it. We enjoy the heat, enjoy the summer that we still have left. Enjoy our kids and have a fine day. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Next, our Republican Caucus Chair, Mr. Mitchell. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, County Court. Staff, whoever else is present. Uh, uh, you know, I look uh, at some of the honorary resolutions uh, in there. There's a lot of positive things going on, but I do want to recognize Suzanne Hart because she was like a one-man band on that poison control. So Suzanne just stuck with it to help keep that money. So good job. Congratulations to you. So uh, uh, 
Labor Day is coming up, so I like to remind everyone sometimes it's just not an extended weekend. We should all celebrate the, the, the men and women, the working men and women of this county and this country, because it is what keeps us all moving forward. And talking about moving forward, we see many things that are moving forward today, and many positive things here in Willow County. And, and I think uh, with the determination and cooperation, uh, we will see many uh, great things happening in Willow County. Talk about great things. How about that Little League World Series? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you know uh, 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 as many people who live in Willow County, you know, I grew up as a young man, I grew up in Chicago, so and I'm an old South Sider, so to watch these kids uh, uh, excel, you know, so, uh, the Chicago team will be on tonight, so, uh, you know, they got a three and one record, they're, they're a great little team, uh, so let's just continue to cheer them on, it's something that, uh, here again, you hear many negative things about young people, but uh, this is certainly shows a group of kids that uh, I think simplify the majority of kids in, in our communities. They're, they're, they're positive kids and men are doing positive things and very often working through very uh, tough situations, personal tough situations. Yeah, so we should be very supportive of these young men and uh, uh, women or boys and girls that participate in these programs. Uh, you know, everyone have a, have a great uh, 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 Labor Day weekend. Uh, I do want to echo Mr. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll think of your name in a second, Walt. Walt Adams. <laughs> Walt. So I'm, I'm getting like Larry. He forgot. He, he, yes. he forgot who somebody was. No, no, no. Uh, Walt Adams, and that is, is that, you know, uh, the kids are back at school. Uh, uh, be aware. You know, very often when we drive, we're not we're, we're distracted or not always paying full attention. Remember those school buses are out there, those kids are walking. So please try to be very careful. Everyone have a, a great Labor Day weekend and we'll be back at it in September. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no more business to come before this board, we will stand adjourned until Thursday evening, September 18th, 2014 at 9.30 a.m.